referring, of course, to Bob and Brad Armstrong. And uh, I think a lot of people would say, you mean the Armstrong brothers. Well, actually, they're a father and son tag team combination, but certainly they do look like brothers, and congratulations. Thank you very much. You know, uh, in 1973, I went to that Omni, and I saw... Uh, my dad here win the, a 1973 Cadillac, and uh, never did I ever think that I'd be there to, uh, to to come out on top of that tournament. It was just, uh, it's like, I'm still in a dream world. It's just like, I'd also like to say thank you to the fans there. They were super to me and dad, and I, and I really appreciate it. That's right. You know, never did I think that my son would be wrestling in the biggest tournament ever held in the South. It was a very happy occasion for us. It was tough. Brad got his nose split, a couple of teeth loosened, a couple of bruised ribs. Look, what the heck? It was all worth it when we got this trophy over here on your right. But you know, Gordon, uh, one thing about it, uh, Tommy Rich is not too happy. Uh, Tommy Rich got a re very raw deal, I feel. Uh, I've talked to him. He's a very dejected young man. He feels that he let himself down as well as the people. But from what I've heard, there's a very lo lot of controversy going on in that national heavyweight title match between he and Superstar. And from the people I've talked to, there was some kind of switch. Something wasn't quite up to par. And I think we'll be hearing more about that. And uh, I just hope Tommy feels a lot better about it. Uh, it's just too bad that everybody couldn't have been as happy as us. And if right now, going if you let me, I want to get that trophy take it with us because it's ours for at least a year. Thank you. It is indeed. And here is the trophy we're referring to, of course. Uh, four foot of uh, silver. And now to talk to Bob Armstrong, I had wanted to talk to Tommy Wildfire Rich, but Tommy, of course, is a very emotional young man and feels uh, that he's let everybody down and, more importantly, let himself down. And Bob, I think everybody would have to disagree with that. Well, certainly. Tommy's, uh, they call him Wildfire, and he didn't get that name by accident. He's got a lot of heart, as much heart as anybody I've ever seen. He's a tough competitor, and he is emotional, like you say, but anybody in this profession has to be emotional or you're a loser, and Tommy is definitely a winner. I'll say this. You can hear the camera people. They feel the same way I do. Now, we were going to watch a film here, I believe, Gordon, in which something happened uh, that Tommy was very instrumental in the very end of what happened on this film. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's something, of course, that in the years that I've been associated with professional wrestling, and Bob and I have talked about it earlier in the years he's been associated with it, I've never seen anything quite like it. It's a phenomenon, in, in my opinion. It's the very first. It's very unusual. And uh, I tell you, a picture's worth a thousand words, Gordon. Why don't we just watch that? Okay, let's go to the Omni, Don, and uh, take a look at exactly what does happen. This regards uh, Dusty Rhodes, the American dream. Now, here you see... Uh, uh, Dusty Rhodes and Gary Hart, and suddenly, there you saw it. And what that is, I don't know, but again, uh, a strange, uh, gaseous-like uh, mixture emanating from the uh, mouth of uh, the great Kabuki that uh, that staggered uh, the American dream. And he obviously is not uh, does not have visual contact with anybody. Uh, and whatever this was caught him in the face, and he does not have uh, any sort of visual, and I'm beginning to think any sort of uh, recognition factor at all. That's exactly right. He's just fighting for survival right now. After this stuff, whatever it was, whatever it was that hit him in the eyes, it caused some damage, and he was just fighting for survival about this time, Gordon. You can see now things went kind of haywire. Uh, Dusty doesn't know where he is. But, you know, anytime you have an eye injury and things go back on you, that's that's a definite problem for you and with as many people in, in involved in this incident he was he was fighting for his life so to speak but you know that's the is back now he's better and he's found the mark and he'll be here i'll tell you one thing he's ready somebody will pay that's the well there's no question he's going to settle the score with a great kabuki and with uh, playboy gary hart and right now uh, i do have uh, tommy wildfire rich with me he is going to have a match here momentarily but uh, tommy i i hope you understand that you have taken this very personally, like you personally have let people down, and, and nobody feels that way at all. Gordon, you know, past few days, and I was, you know, so just I was sitting back there in the back, and, uh, you know, I was feeling kind of sorry for myself, but I heard all these people out here chatting, we want Tommy, we want Tommy. Well, I want to tell them something. Tommy's here, Tommy's here to stay. And I don't give a damn if it's the superstar, the super destroyer, Ric Flair, y'all watch out, right there it says it, Wildfire. And that's exactly what it's gonna be from now on. Tommy Wildfire Rich, and he's heading toward the ring now. He's got a match with Iron Mike Sharp. This should prove to be a tough contest indeed. And uh, I see uh, the superstar uh, entering uh, the area now, coming uh, to ringside. A quick consultation between Mike Sharp and the superstar. The superstar, of course, now the national heavyweight champion. And now I notice the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Rick Flair, on hand and uh, 
looking at it. Well, this Tommy Rich, and he is uh, certainly showing that he is wildfire indeed. He is exploding on Iron Mike Sharp and Sharp. The Iron Man from Canada firing back. And a tremendous contest between these two. And it is uh, Iron Mike Sharp. And wait a second. Jose Medina just starts the ring and now. Tommy Wildfire Rich explodes on him. Ripley's call for the belt, but Tommy Wildfire Rich gets for everybody now. Wildfire did indeed uh, prove that name to be correct. And now, wait a minute, Medina charges in again. And Wildfire, Tommy Rich, catches and hurdles him off the opposite side of the ring. And uh, the superstar starting to go to the ring. And the referee, an obvious uh, situation here, an obvious uh, disqualification, but uh, whether or not, boy, I'll tell you what, Tommy Wildfire Rich has again proved his name. He exploded, and uh, we saw the Tommy Rich of old at that particular point, as uh, no matter who came at him, and he really didn't care. He just took them all. There you see it now as Iron Mike Sharp giving up the battle, uh, coming outside the ring, and it is uh, the superstar sending Medina in. And as he moves in, look at Tommy Wildfire. It's closing in on him before he even gets a chance to get in through those ring ropes. And uh, sends uh, Medina having second thoughts, would like to get away, couldn't. Wildfire was right on him, hurdles him out the opposite side of the ring. And the referee, of course, calling for the disqualification. I would like to point out Michael Hayes. Super Destroyer and uh, the Superstar. As you can see, the Superstar is now wearing the National Heavyweight Championship belt. You know, there's very, very few individuals, Jordan, that come out and tell people exactly what's going to happen. There's no petitions around that I know, or very, very few of them. And a lot of people get up and say, we're going to do this, or I'm going to do that, or I'm going to attempt to do this. I told you, I told Tommy Rich, I told everybody in professional wrestling, I was going to get my belt back. There seemed to be a little bit of controversy about the identity of this man was supposed to be me and that I'm supposed to be him and vice versa. He signed a sworn affidavit. You witnessed it, that he was not the superstar. You can obviously see there were two different individuals. Tommy Rich, Bob Armstrong, wrestling number two, Steve Orr. All these guys come out and they make all kind of accusations. They make all kind of statements, but it's always the same. They can't take defeat. They can't take the idea that they could be knocked off that pedestal up there and brought down to reality. There's only room up there for a few individuals. And I'm at the top right now. My good friend's at the top right now. And Tommy, you and all the crybabies, all the belly aches and complainers, there's nothing you can do about it. The fact is this. I am the champion, and I asked the promotion not only do I want to wrestle on television, I want to have my good friend wrestle on television with me to show everybody that we don't need to cheat. We don't have to do underhanded tactics to win a match. I have never cheated in my life. I've told people what I'm going to do. I've tried to live by that. And I've been very, very successful. And I intend on remaining successful, whether it's in single matches, or tag matches, whether it's here in Georgia, it's in California, it's in Canada, no matter where it is, I can listen to all these crybabies, Tommy Rich, wrestling number two, Big Red, Michael Hayes, hey, they're good at crying. You know why? They've had a lot of practice. I don't cry because I make my own destiny. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, you'll see them in action now, then. The Superstar and the Super Destroyer in action in an Australian tag team match. And they're going up against uh, Mike Jackson and Rick Thor. So here you have uh, two men at about 270 pounds each, facing two men who uh, go between uh, 200 and uh, 230 pounds, which would be in that light heavyweight division. Uh, offsetting the uh, size and weight will be the speed and versatility. It ought to be an outstanding match. Mike Jackson, the first one out, moving up against uh, the superstar, who is now the no the national heavyweight champion. And very quickly, the superstar lashes out Mike Jackson. Retaliates, gets him with a beautiful flying drop kick, and it is the superstar outside the ring. And Mike 
Jackson's about as explosive a wrestler as you'd ever want to find, right? Absolutely, for his weak pound for pound, he's tremendous. Of course, he's overweight. You know, interesting. We have two people here with master's degree. Is that true? I would think I learned that last week. Yes, Is you have both true? the uh, superstar and uh, Mike Jackson. Both of them. Is brawn and brain at the same time. Nice takedown. Trying to sit out there, but the overweight. Oh, very good. Very good. I thought the weight was going to override that fellow. Well, there's where the speed and the agility took over for uh, Mike Jackson. He was able to slip away from that. The question is going to be, uh, on a fresh start, both men, I would uh, consider, because of their varying degrees of capabilities, are equal. But as time wears on, uh, that lactic acid starts burning off and off, just which man is going to show fatigue first? Absolutely, yeah. So one good thing that now interesting that wrestlers are starting to do is B15, a new vitamin that what it does is put more oxygen and allows your blood to contain more oxygen, giving you more stamina. And it's interesting because I know myself I'm taking it, and I know a lot of these other fellows are experimenting with it. Side headlock now by Rick Thor and the... Oh. Super Destroyer picked him up, heaved him like a sack of beans, and it is uh, Thor feeling the anger now as the Superstar tags up with uh, Super Destroyer. One to the midsection now, one to the side of the jaw, puts Thor back to the canvas again. Referee Scrappy McGowan told him now to snap there, has Thor back to the canvas. And uh, so the superstar has things uh, rather well under control here with a rear chin lock. Looks like a thumb to the throat there to me a little bit. Uh, our commentary said he does never cheat. Uh, I'm not so sure that's true, but then again, that's smart. Because after all, why tell them? <laughs> He's in there to win. He needed that was looks like a thumb to the throat to me. That is against the rules. He says he never cheats. I don't think he does. <laughs> Super Destroyer now maintaining some dominance here on uh, Rick Thor. Thor catching an elbow that time driven to the canvas. And Thor drives one to the midsection, one to the side of the jaw. Another one, and Thor unhooks a couple of lefts and rights. Now makes the bag. Mike Jackson moves in. And Jackson wasting no time whatsoever. An uh, all-out frontal assault on the uh, Super Destroyer. Cut short, however, by two knees. One to the midsection, one high to the chest of Mike Jackson. If they would be getting up that much weight, if they would rapid tag, rapid tag, being lighter, probably their stamina is better. Rapid tags would wear these fellas down. Get one guy in there. Don't let him get to his corner. But I can't be in the corner to coach him, unfortunately. Nice powerful slam. Look at the strength of that superstar. Incredible. Oh, that is great. Boy, boy, boy. Hang, hang her. Neck breaker there, and he uh, either did not allow the pin or Jackson was coming to his feet. One or the other was difficult to tell. I don't think he would have got it. Forearm to the small of the back, and Jackson now firing to the midsection, one to the top of the head. Left and right to the body now, and it is uh, Rick Thor moving in. Thor caught coming into the booth in the midsection, and he lifted the uh, chest area once again now into a full body slam. Lenny Thor, yeah, nice, nice body slam. Superstar comes in, takes his time. Very, oh, very nice double cross. Such, such a powerful man. That's 280 pounds coming at you. Four of them. Thor now, and again, caught, he caught the duck line. That is driving about 40 miles an hour with a, uh, on horseback, right? horseback catching a tree. And now you've got uh, the uh, Super Destroyer in there, Beautiful. bear hug into a slam. There he is for the lateral press and the count of three on Rick Thor. Beautiful tag team combination there. Well, it'll be interesting to chat a little bit further with these gentlemen, uh, the Super Destroyer and the Superstar. He said, of course, the Superstar is now the National Heavyweight Champion. And, uh, well, gentlemen, if you were out to prove a point, I would say that you did it uh, rather... We don't have to prove points, Gordon. I just wanted to show you, illustrate to you, illustrate to Mr. Piper, who's watching all these, illustrate to Tommy Rich, Big Red, the other imposter walking around complaining about everybody that's hazed. And wrestling number two, fellas, don't let me forget the new champions. The pride and joy of Marietta. I don't know who's the pride or who's the joy. Who's overjoyed about your victory? Armstrongs, if you want a tag team combination and you want to have a battle, all you got to do is sign a contract with this individual, Super Destroyer, and myself. Because, fellas, I am the current national champion. And we are looking to be the world tag team champion. And we're going to get that opportunity. Hey, look, 
and challenges from uh, Big Red himself. We'll be back in just a moment. situation thus far in the match and that's rather surprising except I think that uh, Turner came out there probably with a different bit of strategy in mind uh, perhaps a thought to lock up collar and elbow check his man out uh, and he suddenly found out that Big O wasn't having any of that it was a strictly all-out frontal assault yeah Big O went for the attack immediately trying to first of all if you can't get the push you know in a wrestling match Mr. So of course you know I'm explaining it for the folks here that don't but for the wrestling match, the man who gets the first hold, the man who makes the first successful move, definitely has a psychological advantage immediately. Immediately he has that just that pitch edge. And that's just what Big O went out there and did. Now, he might have this man confused a bit, which is kind of in the of science, which I'm talking about. We were talking about vitamins, we are talking about wrestling with the science of thinking, which is very good on Big O's part. Again, Big Joe Turner. Hurtled through those ring ropes onto the ring apron and down to the concrete floor outside. And uh, uh, the big O, watching his man, conserving his energy, watching him carefully, catches him coming back into the ring. Catches him off the ring. Wow! And he does. He measures his man before he takes him. Yeah, well, he's a tough man, this big O, for sure. He can hit hard. Coach, you see, now he couldn't do that for me because I would be fighting him a little different than this man. This man's trying to go toe to toe, stand up, eyeball to eyeball, nose to nose, and that's not the way to do it. But I'll talk to him later and throw him in just on how to fight big people like that. Oh, picked him up for a big old. Did not allow the pin. Did not allow the pin. Now, he had uh, ample opportunity, it appeared to me, for a uh, pinning combination and. Uh, Big Joe Turner coming up uh, rather slowly, dropped to the canvas again by uh, the Big O. And so the Big O has now got an added uh, psychological edge on his man. Uh, clamps down with a front chancery now on uh, 
Big Joe Turner, and so he is obviously there to punish as well as to pin. Absolutely, and you know, of course, Mr. Soli, I, I know it is such a pleasure to be here with you, being such a such a good commentator of wrestling. Uh, it, it is, and you know exactly what these men are doing. When he's doing that to his opponent, when he's punishing, he knows other wrestlers are watching him now on the monitor, and he's trying to scare them, and, and you know that. And uh, it's a smart tactic. I would do it myself. So it must be smart. It's uh, sh uh, showing absolutely no... Uh, no compunction at all about adding additional punishment. And uh, finally scores the uh, count of three. And it is all over for Big Joe Turner. And I want to take a moment right now to talk to uh, Mr. Austin Idol. Well, I'm sure you thought you were right now, but I'm not here to talk about how pretty I am, or how rich I am, or how sexy I am, or how mean I am. But the reason I'm out here, and I'll tell you right now, is that I think that it bears repeating about all the complaining that's being done around here. I've never seen anything so disgusting in my life, over whining, over moaning, over droning, and like the superstar said, all the crybabies. You can see, look at my head right here, there's gas soaking in the Omni. I'm not crying about it, but look at Michael Hayes. He's crying about the defeat he's suffering the hands of us now. Look at wrestling too, he's crying. And look at Tommy Rich, he's crying on everybody's shoulder. And now I heard about Leroy Brown is coming to town. He's a troubleshooter. I'm going to tell you something right now, Leroy Brown. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how bad you are. If you stick your nose in my business, I'll cut you down the side so quick. As a matter of fact, where is Leroy Brown? Side of Chicago. We'll be back. Brad Armstrong battling his way out. Makes the tag with Bob Armstrong. Bob Armstrong explodes on Duggan. Bob Armstrong gets the set field coming in. Caught from behind by Duggan. Now he's got all four men in the ring at the same time. He's got a gun as well. Whoa! That man went right over the top rope. Isn't that a disqualification? Well, I think you would be the first. He's got the pinfall. He's got the pinfall. I think you'd be the first one to say, uh, uh, Rod, unless the referee saw it upcoming. Also, a situation between the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, and the great Kabuki. We'll be going into that in some detail. And a quick reminder telling you, of course, that the NWA World Junior Heavyweight Champion, Les Thornton, will be uh, seen here on Georgia Championship Wrestling in the very near future. Lots of great things upcoming, so let's not waste any time. Let's go to our ring announcer, Freddie Miller. With a 10-minute time limit, one fall 10, from St. Petersburg, Florida, at 215 pounds, here's Tom Rogers. Tom Rogers. His opponent from Las Vegas, Nevada, at 241 pounds, the universal heartthrob, Austin Idol. Austin Idol. The referee is Nick Patrick. All right, Austin Idol. Moving out against Tom Rogers. Rogers out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Idol now making a home in uh, Vegas. And, of course, uses the Vegas leg lock, which has been, uh, it's a Vegas, uh, it's, it's a variation of a figure four leg lock is what it is, actually, uh, Rod. 
And I know you're familiar uh, in watching the man uh, apply that. He applies it very successfully. Yes, and I wonder, it's going to be interesting to see if he uses it on this young man here. Now, if I was this man, I would already have a counter to it and be watching for it and be trying to set him up so he tries to use it so I can use the counter. It'll be interesting to see his taking his robot. A little striking out there. Very good, Austin. Idle, of course, a uh, magnificent physical specimen. But he's facing a, a slightly smaller edition of himself because Roger certainly is in outstanding physical condition. The abdominal rectile muscles, uh, the biceps, the triceps, the pectoralis. Maybe I got Rogers catching out tonight from behind a quick lateral press after a drop kick. Idle powered out, however. And uh, Rogers after him very quickly. And so Rogers using the element of surprise. And thus far has Idle in trouble and Idle utilizing the ring ropes to force the break. Very smart on Austin's part. Austin near caught himself. Caught this young man. You, now you talk about some tremendous athletes. Very smart on his part. What he did is he got on the ropes and got the man to break and got him away so he can get his composure again. Good throw. Got an elbow and it's Rogers now with a side headlock on Austin Idle. And it is Idle now trapped in that side headlock so he found himself against a very strong opponent. Idol, I think, had to come into that ring perhaps a bit over atomic knee drop as Rogers uh, stunned here momentarily. Now that's something that can happen to you. See, when you find out who you're fighting and you say to yourself, I have to beat him, and you go in there not thinking, well, this young man probably has been psyching himself up for two days to fight Austin Idol, because after all, Austin Idol is a big name in wrestling, and it'll be a credit to this young man. And I think he did go in just a little overconfident, but you notice he's managed to gain his composure here because he's got full control of what's going on. Rogers yeah. through those ring ropes, and uh, he's in trouble outside on the concrete. And uh, Rogers has had some steam uh, taken out of him. A little wind out of the sails, if you will, and now Idol brings him back into the ring. That shows you the power in Austin Idol there. Whoa. Fast breaker. Very well executed. High in the air, coming right down on the knee, trying to get the point of the knee. Bone to ribs is what you're looking for. You don't want the thigh part. You don't want the muscle. You want bone to bone. That's how you hurt him, and it's obvious it's not the wind of this young man. As indeed caught him in the lower section of the rib cage, and Roger coming in very slowly. Rocked into the ropes that time and through the ropes as uh, Rogers lost control of himself here totally. And it is idle, continuing to pummel and punish uh, Tom Rogers. Yeah, it shows you here now two fine athletes, but where weight can sometimes be to the advantage, and Austin is using it extremely well. Going for the suplex, got him up. Vertical suplex on uh, Tom Rogers, and Austin Idol has a very stunned, very shaken Tom Rogers on the canvas. He's in the black trunks and in a lot of trouble now as he's trying to regroup his body and bring himself back into uh, total consciousness, rolling against the uh, legs and feet of Austin Idol in pain as Idol brings him up. Once again, Horace Lamb caught him into that top rope. Vicious move now. This man's being vicious here. He's got this boy hurt. He knows he's hurt, and he's continuing to do punishing moves. Now, dropping him across the, his throat across the rope there. That's something that can hurt him permanently. Slamming him. Look at that. There go. He's taking advantage of the foul. But I understand because he's got a point to prove. Don't fool with Austin Idol is what he's saying right now to every other wrestler in the world. Driving the knee into the... Indeed, it's, it's, it's such you. That's an interesting point. All right, he has hooked the... Uh, Head hooks the leg and scores the uh, one, two, three. And so Austin Idol, once again, and we may get a chance to take a look at uh, Austin Idol just to show you the kind of power he does have. He's there on the second rope. That is within the legal parameters. Drives off, drives that knee directly into the chest, uh, into the sternum area, actually. Catches uh, Tom Rogers. That continues to force the air out of his uh, system. That's the way he comes in, hooks the arm and the leg simultaneously, bringing that body around. And you'll notice, even though his body was writhing and partially in the air, the shoulders were still flat to the canvas. And there you have to give, certainly, credit to Austin Idol for quite a victory indeed. December 13th, mark that down on your calendars right now. And may I just suggest right now, National Tag Team Championship. So let's go to ringside now with Rod Piper as he interviews the new National Tag Team Champions.
Well, of course, it's a pleasure, and I'd like to congratulate you two gentlemen on winning the National Tag Team Champion. You were the underdogs going into it, and uh, for a second, if you wouldn't mind, I would like to speak with Brad, being that you're the younger and uh, more inexperienced of the two. It must have been tough for you in there to watch your father uh, in his match and to, to fight like you did, and, and it must have been great conditioning you went through in this particular contest. Well, yes, sir, Mr. Piper, you know it was uh, probably one of the toughest tournaments, uh, the toughest uh, that I've ever been in in my life. And uh, uh, like you said, watching Dad uh, get hurt or watching me get down a little bit, uh, we've, got a, we've got a pack kind of an agreement between each other that uh, we let each other do his own thing. You know what I'm talking about? Let each other do his own thing. That's interesting. Very good. Very good. And I like a little about the social life. You must, with all the all the condition you've been doing, it must be tough for you. Have you been dating any young ladies or a little about the personal life? Uh, well, Mr. Piper, you know, if it's one thing I like better than wrestling, and that's these pretty Georgia peaches here. And uh, I, I, I try to squeeze some time in for them, you know, that's uh, for myself. And... Uh, but how do you feel about kind of being in the shadow of your dad, like kind of like, you don't feel like a daddy's boy at all. Do you kind of being in the shadow of your dad and, and having your dad being an accomplished wrestler, do you feel a little, a little, uh, you know, kind of, you, know, you want your own kind of identity. Do you feel that at all? Do you feel that people are down on you at all because, because after all, your, your dad is Mr. Armstrong and you're kind of Brad Jr. and uh, that have been and you're in there and after all, you're younger and a little bit less experienced. Just a second. Why don't you talk to me for a while? You, you talk to Brad, and if you want to interview well, me, some questions, I'd be glad to answer you. Well, it'll be my pleasure. Matter of fact, you were next, Mr. Armstrong. And uh, the fact that you won the title is a quite an accomplishment, and you were the underdogs. You are one of the lightest teams going in there, and I didn't really believe that, that you would have won it, but it, it is a credit to you. And as far as the conditioning goes, and as far as your son is concerned... Uh, well, if you'll let me say just one word, I, I perfectly agree with you. We were underdogs. Uh, nobody really took us that seriously because we were the lightest team, and that might be one reason that we won the tournament, that we did came, uh, come out on top. You mean like it was lucky that you won the tournament? Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying that we weren't a little lucky. I'm just saying that things went our way, and we did win the tournament, and we're very proud to be champions. Well, that's, that's very good. And imagine the condition. I noticed the legs and the body looking at you. You must have done a, with skinny legs like that. You must have done a lot of running uh, and conditioning. I'm not knocking it at all. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying you must have ran a lot and worked hard at it. I can understand uh, that. Yeah. Let, let me say this about my trim legs. I've always believed in Greco-Roman wrestling. I uh, use the upper body. Upper Body. And I'd like to ask you one question. Uh, have you ever seen a racehorse with fat legs? A racehorse with fat legs. I no. don't believe you've ever seen a racehorse with fat legs. Because we're southern-born, southern-bred, thoroughbred. That's the way feel we feel about it. Feel the way you like. Thank you for your interview. A thoroughbred with fat legs. Well, it's certainly been a pleasure, uh, Mr. Armstrong. And uh, if you're ever in a horse race, I'm sure you'll win. Well, all right, uh, the comments and an interesting interview, uh, Rod Piper interviewing the new national tag team champions, and, uh, well, quite obviously there that, uh, well, we can go on to other things. We're going to be watching, uh, yeah, you hear it? Yeah, that's it. You hear that music, you know one thing. And the policeman himself, from the south side of Chicago, moving into the ring at this time. Bad, bad, Leroy Brown. He's going up against a very, very tough man in Big Joe Turner. Leroy Brown outside the ring, shaking hands with a host of fans. Uh, he has uh, struck the hearts of all of these fans almost immediately. And uh, wearing that hard hat, moving in with those bib overalls, going up against uh, Big Joe Turner, waiting for the bell to ring. Referee, of course, Nick Patrick, and uh, he calls for the bell. There it is. Bad, bad Leroy Brown. Big Joe Turner, equal height almost and almost equal weight. So it should be quite a contest. And, woo! and uh, bad, bad Leroy Brown proving his point very, very quickly. Clubbing right hand to the side of the head that puts Turner to the canvas. And a headbutt. Turner is down once again. Uh, here's, a, here's a man here that has come from nothing and made himself a name. What a 325. Look at how agile he moves. Now, this 
this is an impressive man here. You see, notice you got a man, another man that he's fighting there. Got to be 260. The man, look at those punches. They mean nothing against Leroy Brown. Very strong, very. Look at that. Cause he says he comes from the ghetto in Chicago and he knows doesn't know how to wrestle. He says, but he knows how to fight. Well, I must look. I must admit that he's not afraid to gouge some eyes. Not afraid to get in there and get it done. Big full body slam by uh, Bad Bad Leroy Brown has Big Joe Turner back to the canvas once again. And it is uh, Turner coming up and Leroy Brown giving him a helping hand as he warms him on He caught him with an elbow coming off the ropes. And uh, Bad Bad Leroy Brown telling him, wow, 320 pounds crashing into the uh, chest cavity of uh, Big Joe Turner. It is all over. And your victor from the south side of Chicago, Bad Bad Leroy Brown. seeing it again here in uh, slow motion and uh, there you see bad bad Leroy Brown 320 pounds crashing down across the chest of uh, big Joe Turner and so a most impressive victory for bad bad Leroy Brown making his first uh, appearance here on Georgia Championship Wrestling and uh, we'll be back oh, in a moment right now to talk to uh, the superstar who is now the national heavyweight champion and the uh, super destroyer and, of course, gentlemen, still a lot of controversy surrounding... There's uh, always controversy where I'm involved, and now where this gentleman's involved. I hear Tommy Rich, he's crying and complaining, and they got uh, Big Red out here supposed to fabricate and develop some unknown proof and show it to all these individuals. And you got the big goof from Chicago out there, the policeman. All these guys get on, and they say what they're going to do, but there's only one man here that can ever go out and say he's going to do something and do it. Now, I was supposed to wrestle here today, but I'm not going to wrestle. If you want to see me, or these people want to see me, they're going to have to pay to see the champion wrestle. Uh, Gordon, Gordon, uh -oh. Gordon, I'm here today, and I'm going to wrestle today, because I have something to show these people out here. Being associated with the mass Superstar is fine and everything, but the people out here today are going to see the Super Destroyer as himself right now. Well, fair enough. Let's uh, watch the Super D then as he moves into the ring. He'll be going up against uh, Rick Benfield. And this is uh, one fall, a 10-minute time limit, waiting now for the bell. There's the bell. Benfield in the blue trunks, Super Destroyer, of course, of the uh, black uh, trunks and the uh, red mask with the stars on it. Beginning to see now why there was that great talk of uh, debate whether or not it's Super Destroyer was the superstar. If you notice the similarity in the trunks with the stars down the uh, left leg, the stars uh, on the mask. Benfield now with a good hammerlock on uh, Super Destroyer. Up into those ring ropes, and the referee calls for the break, and Super Destroyer, in a good clean break, steps back into the center of the ring, collar and elbow. Super Destroyer pulling at Benfield back into the ring ropes. What a big, impressive man, this Super Destroyer is, and what a tag team they make because they have brawn and brain like we discussed before. Superstar and the Super Destroyer are both people who have gone to college, are both people who can bench press over 450, or both people who can think and fight at the same time. Makes them a deadly tag team combination. Of course, the Superstar himself, being the champion, speaks for himself, doesn't he? It does indeed, and Super Destroyer taking Benfield uh, back in a bear hug up into the turnbuckle, crushing more air out of him. Now a boot to the side of the rib cage that again forces more air out of the uh, life support system of Rick Benfield. Benfield now doubled up, having a lot of trouble, a lot of uh, reddening of the upper body here as he has taken those percussions to the side uh, and to the back. Some people, you know, sometimes people wonder now, why would he put his throat on the rope and choke him? Now, what he's done here is he's kicked him in the ribs. Now, you notice, first of all, he kicked him high, bone to bone is what we call it, and when he took the wind at him, the next thing he did is kept the wind at him by taking him to the rope because he knows he's got that score count. Now, look at what he does. What is he doing? He's He's, he's limiting the lungs to air, right? He, that's the best way to exhaust a man. Don't let him breathe. Very good. Benfield trying desperately to break his way out of this now. And the uh, Super Destroyer drives a uh, knee lift into the midsection once again, continuing to deprive uh, Benfield of that much-needed oxygen. And, of course, as the oxygen supply is depleted to the brain, uh, 
the uh, mind begins to uh, function a little more slowly, and obviously if it functions more slowly, then uh, the muscles are going to respond a lot slower. Mr. Sawyer, very good. You notice how intensely the superstar is watching right now. You notice how every move he's making, that's what makes him such a fine combination here, is they're watching each other all the time, so they learn each other, they know each other just like it was themselves, and that's what's important in tag team combinations, and important just when you got someone watching your back. Referee checking with Benefield, but Benefield, a gritty competitor, hanging on, and he keeps the uh, oh. full bear hug on him now. Strong and enough. Strong he's enough. a lot of trouble. Now he's got, notice the difference now in the hand situation. So much little technique. Now he's got the knuckles against the, fat, the, the spine, pushing on the lungs. Before, he just had meat against meat. You don't want that. You want bone against bone is what you want. That's what wins wrestling matches. Benefield beginning to sag, and he is uh, having a lot of trouble trying to get that uh, much-needed oxygen. His muscles now failing to respond on uh, on his own uh, development of the match here, and consequently now the Super Destroyer driving him back toward the mat. Benefield finally driven to the mat. Benefield able to get his shoulder off before the count, however, keeps that shoulder off. Super Destroyer presses an advantage more, but now Benefield able to get that shoulder up. Super Destroyer down across the chest and the throat of Benefield. Moved off before the count. Moved off before the count of three, and again back into the bear hug. Very good. You see, concentrating on the same part of the body. Once you got something hurt, you stay with it. That's what makes me so good is that I can stay with the same part, and I know to stay with the same part. And that's just what he's doing there. Notice again the knuckles, how he's got knuckles again. He realized himself. Am I going too much depth here, Mr. Soli? No, 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 I think you're doing very well. Thank you very much. I know, you see... If the people can just spot the little bit of technique that's involved in professional wrestling, the little thing that he's doing right now is so important, it makes all the difference in the world. Superstar, of course, knows how to make, makes him a champion. Of course, 280 pounds helps too, doesn't it, Mr. Zorro? Well, yeah. it does, along with the, uh, the consummate skill that he has. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, Super Destroyer continuing to move against Benfield and Benfield now. That upper body is totally reddened. Absolutely. You can even see in his face, and, and he's not even cutting any blood off of the face, but you can just see from the pressure. It's such a smart wrestler. Such, such good tactics here are involved that the people could just appreciate what he's doing. And it's hard work and hard labor to get this done. Super D asking uh, Benfield to concede, but uh, Benfield, as gritty a competitor as I've seen in a long time, he is not conceding, continues to uh, press home, and of course, outside of camera range, the superstar continues to uh, look on, obviously with a great deal of interest. He and the Super Destroyer have uh, formed a pact or an allegiance, if you will, a series of headbutts now by the uh, Super Destroyer. And Benfield has just taken it. Uh -uh, oh, put the ropes, calls for the break. Lucky, yes. What intensity the superstar is, is watching, too. You can see he's into every move. Right back to the face. Very good, very strengthened. But you got to give this man credit. I, I don't believe it. I, I would have thought he would have given up a long time ago. He's still fighting back, although the blows don't have much, uh, much power behind him. Oh. Oh. Draw the knee to the midsection, and uh, it is uh, Benfield in a lot of trouble here. No, sir, up on that uh, top rope. And I heard about this. And I heard about this with the Super Destroyer. The Super The Super Plex coming off that second rope. It is all over. All over for uh, uh, young Rick Benfield. And uh, the Super Destroyer coming outside the ring in a quick uh, conversation with the uh, Superstar. And, uh, well, now, wait a minute. Why is the Super Destroyer going back in? The referee's still attending to Benson. Uh-uh, Super Destroyer now. And the referee warning Super Destroyer he could reverse this situation. And wait a second. Wait a minute. Bad, bad Leroy Brown just hit the ring. And suddenly, uh, the Super Destroyer and the Superstar decided to leave. And uh, I can certainly understand why. Hey, Sola, I told you the post McCauley's mail was here. The bad bad from Chicago. And this thing like this is going to end. It's going to end now.
not next week, not next month. So yes, I have had enough to prove I had enough. And the big man, when he says it's going to happen, baby, it's going to happen. There you have it. Bad, bad. Leroy Brown will look past the creepy stuff. All right, there we have it now. Final match on this hour of Georgia Championship Wrestling. One fall with television time remaining. An Australian tag team match of Ron Apollo and Rick Thor and it's El Ground Apollo giving Rick Stevens one four into a hip lock takedown. Stevens very quickly into a head scissors. Apollo powers out. It's uh, Ray Stevens and uh, Ole Anderson against El Ground Apollo and Rick Thor. The tag is made. Rod Piper to my left and Buzz Sawyer to my right. So I'm su surrounded here by about $2 million worth of great wrestling talent. Look at that wrestling Ole Anderson's doing. Everybody's talking about how mean and bad he is. Sure he's mean and bad, but look at that wrestling. Look at that wrestling. Doesn't that look good? Really interesting. Look at Apollo hitting him with the fist. That's not right. That's not right. I uh, think Mr. Apollo is probably retaliating back in time, Mr. Sawyer, and uh, I hesitate to take issue with you on that, but uh, uh, Apollo will do what is necessary. Ray Stevens moved in. That appeared to be a fist in the midsection. No, and he went no, top wrist lock. No, I wasn't a fist. I wasn't a fist. I, I didn't see that. Either. Convenient eyesight on the part of uh, Buzz Sawyer, and it is uh, Rick Thor having his problems now as... Uh, Wow, beautiful two play. Had him the double underhook. And Mr. Piper now, Ole Anderson moves out. Yes, you notice tremendous teamwork. Stevens did not let go of the legs until Anderson had control. That's what makes tag team combinations. Anderson now caught by uh, Thor, but Anderson very quickly with a superior weight and strength pulls Thor back into his own corner. As soon as he gets in trouble, what does he do? He tags. That's what these people must learn. It's called tag team. That means you tag. That looks rather good right there, sticking his foot in his throat. That's where his foot belongs, right in his throat. Mr. Piper made the comment that Mr. Anderson was uh, in trouble. I would imagine Anderson would take umbrage to that. Uh, I don't think he feels he's ever in trouble. Well, when I say trouble, I mean that he's at a disadvantage at that particular time. He wasn't hurt, but, or rather, should I say, before he got into trouble, would maybe be a better parallel there. He immediately tagged. An excellent retraction, and it is uh, Anderson uh, leaving the flat of the foot up as uh, Thor was driven into the foot. Ray Stevens tags out, and it is uh, Anderson back into the ring. Thor off the ropes, caught him, coming right off the ropes with the back of the elbow and makes the tag with Stevens, keeps him tied up. Yeah, that's right, stick that foot in his face. Put a little pain on that man. Okay. On, Ray the comments of Buzz Sawyer, Stevens has him up for the pile driver and that could well be all she wrote. Uh -oh. A count of three, the Anderson brothers coming out victorious over the combination of El Gran Apollo and uh, Rick Thor. The fall, of course, uh, taken on Rick Thor. El Gran Apollo out there now offering uh, what help he can to him. And the Andersons now, uh, I'd like to call, if you'll excuse me, Buzz, I'd like to call uh, Ole Anderson over to uh, chat with him and Ray Stevens for just a moment because uh, an outstanding match. You get a couple of world champions together, former world tag champion here, former world tag champion Anderson, what a combination. It could be Anderson's, it could be Anderson, it could be Stevens. Anytime you're in the ring and you see a couple of guys like this wrestling, you know you're seeing the greatest of wrestling. Am I right, Ray? That's right, it's a privilege to wrestle with a man like Ole Anderson. The reputation he's got speaks for itself. And you know what? I think we could capture any championship there is, Ole. No question about it. You know, here, all these people down here know that in this area, it's the greatest wrestling around the world. When you're in the South, you're in the best wrestling in the world. Whether it's the Carolinas or Georgia or Florida, this is where the great wrestling is at. And this is where the great wrestlers are. And you're looking at two of the greatest wrestlers right here. Ole Anderson and Ray Stevens, my thanks, of course, uh, to the comments from Buzz. Out of the